I've been to Russia three times now, and every time I come here, I notice new weird things that I had never seen before. So today, I'm gonna check out this Russian supermarket and show you all of the strange things I haven't ever seen in another country. Make sure to watch to the end to see all of the strangest types of Lay's potato chips that I've only seen here in Russia. This is one of the largest supermarkets in Russia. They call it a Gipur market or a hypermarket. So it's even bigger than a supermarket. And you can find almost anything here, which is why it's a perfect place to look for weird stuff. The alcohol aisle is huge. I mean, just liquor, brown liquor, is this long. It looks like a liquor store. Vodka basically has its own aisle inside of the supermarket. I think there's at least a hundred different kinds of vodka here. They've got Kind Bear Eco Vodka, which is about $4 a bottle. There's also some hilarious brand names for vodka that are so Russian. They have a brand of vodka called Air, and it says, drink like breathing. We got Corn, Tsar, Russian Standard. You can buy a shot, a Russian sized shot of vodka in the store as well. Not in the little bottles that you would buy on an airline like this. They call a shot postogram, which means a uh, hundred milliliters. And uh, usually they keep these glasses for drinking bottles of vodka later. That's why you buy this one. So you get a glass, a, a shot glass and a, a whole 0.1 liters of vodka. And it only costs about a dollar, a little over a dollar. We've got war themed bottles of vodka with these scenes from wars. This vodka is themed after the Sib Trans-Siberian Railway and it's called Siberian Express from Moscow to Vladivostok. That's so funny. This is evil vodka, look. Vodka straight out of the Kremlin. I'm sure that uh, oligarchs just love to drink Legend of Kremlin. More Kremlin themed vodka. The most holy vodka that you could possibly find, Siberia Orthodox. And of course they've got vodka in a nesting doll. That's funny. They've also got a lot of kind of liquor from other countries from the former Soviet Union that Americans never tried before, like cha-cha. It's basically distilled grape liquor that's been filtered a lot of times. So if you made vodka out of grapes, you get cha-cha. They have their own version of moonshine called semogon, and this one is made out of cedar nuts. Bread liquor, which tastes like bread. As you can see, it's got a piece of bread on the bottle. Hrenovuka, horseradish and ginger. I bet that's super spicy. They love to put a lot of berries inside of liquor and they call it nastoika. They drink it at the end of the night after a lot of other drinks. Pro tip, never drink the nastoika at the end of the night. The hangover is terrible. They got cherry cognac, cherry chili, honey. honey. What is that one? Cranberry with honey. Cranberry honey, apricot, grass flavored, which is already 40%. This one even has a blade of grass in it. Vanilla chocolate flavored. Pepper flavored, pine nuts. Russians have their own flavor of soda that are straight out of the Soviet Union and everyone always drank them. They didn't have cola before like the 80s. So let's check out the old classic flavors of Russian soda. If you ask a Russian what their favorite flavor is, pear is a top choice. Along with tarragon. Everyone in Russia loves tarragon. I'd never tried tarragon flavored soda before Russia. It's not that good, but it's all right. Fechwa, which I have no idea how to print, how to even translate this into English. It's a very weird little cactus looking bud thing. Barberry, which I've never seen in any other country. They're almost always in glass bottles like this. One interesting thing is that Ghost is the government trademark of Russia. So it's been verified as a good quality product. And I guess this is some old Soviet thing that still exists today. Only a few old brands have ghost written on them. I guess uh, this is not a high quality soda. The only one that's really recognizable for Americans is cream soda, but it's got a picture of vanilla ice cream on it and not cream, which is funny. It's yeah, it's got vanilla ice cream and then just some soda water on the label. What is, 
<laughs> what a strange label. The funniest thing is that I'm speaking English and recording everything here in the market and no one has stopped and asked us what we're doing or like stared or anything like that. They look for a second in the market and then they keep going. And you gotta give it to Russian people for not giving me a hard time. In other countries, probably wouldn't be like this. This is definitely some ancient Soviet stuff. There are preserves of juice in these jars. And once you open it, you'll never be able to close it again. So you better drink it really fast. It's like the whole family is going to only drink this for a week after it's open. And you know, they got almost every kind of uh, stuff and preserves, including pumpkin. That is so weird that they have pumpkin juice preserves. And uh, sea buckthorn, which is absolutely the most Russian flavor ever. These little orange berries. This isn't really juice or preserves. It's something that's super Russian. It's called kompot. And I don't know how that translates in English, but basically what they do is they put some water and these fruit into a you know boiler, they boil it, and then uh, they just bottle it. And because it's you know pasteurized, it, it's okay. And you can drink it, but it's just berry flavored water. And I've never understood why Russians love it. I've tried it many times and it never grew on me. And this is gelatin juice. They literally put gelatin into juice. Maybe you could call it jelly punch. You can see that it's basically the consistency of snot. Sometimes it's more jelly than this. But yeah, this is probably about like 10% gel on its way to jello. In almost every Russian supermarket, they do this weird thing with beer. What do you think this is? This guy is literally bottling beer right now into these plastic bottles. I don't know where this originated, but they have it in almost every Russian supermarket. So yeah, they bottle the tap beer out of the kegs into plastic bottles, and then they put these labels on, and it looks so homemade. They're always sticky. It's very sticky. Foreign beers. A lot of beers they put in these bags. I don't know why they put it in the bag. I guess it's better if it's in a bag, in a bottle. Why do you need to put it in a bag, in a bottle? What is that about? This is a sin, that they would even make something that's bamboo beer. This looks pretty normal, right? It's just a bunch of Corona, but it's not because this one is from Britain. <laughs> I don't know why Russians think Corona's from Britain. I'm sorry, Mexico. They don't know better. Uh, uh, they love this drink called Kavas, which is basically beer without any alcohol. Tastes like something between bread and cola. And kids love it. Whenever they're drinking at the adult table, adults drinking beer, kids are drinking the class. This one is alive, which means it still has some bacteria in it. They have zero tolerance for driving drunk. And if you drink like two bottles of this, you can't go drive afterwards because you won't blow 0.00. Because .00. that's just a tiny bit of alcohol in it. And Russians love snacks with their beer, but they don't eat normal snacks like Lay's potato chips. No, they eat dried fish snacks. All right, I've tried almost all of these and I can confirm that this one is the best. Uh, it's just, you know, fish meat and it doesn't smell great, but it's very sweet and tasty. Followed by the calamari jerky. I do not like little bitty anchovies that are dried. Not my thing. Um, what else we got? This one's an assorted fish meat. They've got whole pieces of big fish. This one's got tails on it. Anything else is weird. Huge pieces of fish that look like murder victim samples. And they also like these little dried fish. These ones are kind of still wet. They're only half dried. And uh, crawfish that are pickled is a delicacy. This is so expensive. How much money is that? It's like, $80 for this giant jar. So I guess if, on a big party they would have it. They like these really weird pastries too. I'll show you a couple now. This is check check, which is just a bunch of honey and cashews. And uh, this weird paste that's been dried out that is sunflower seeds. What is it called? Halva. Yeah, I don't know. I bet it's Turkish actually. We have a disagreement about it. Nastya doesn't agree. One of the most popular pastries is zephyr and it's very hard it's like call it plastic even and uh, it's made out of egg whites and sugar whipped 
and then they make these little cakes and let it dry. I've never liked it. I don't know why they like it. This is probably the most Russian thing that you can eat. It's called shushki. They're little pretzel rings, but they don't have any flavor to them at all. I don't know why they like them, but they eat them always with tea, and it's just a Russian tradition, I guess. Also, they like these goldfish, but they don't eat them dry. They put them in milk, like cereal. Pryanik. Pryanik. And this is from Tula, and it's like, uh, it's like mint cracker. It's good, actually, some of it. Yep. It's an entire city where all they make is these minty crackers. I'm sure that all these people think that I'm some kind of a secret supermarket agent because I come here and I film so much. <laughs> there are so many kinds of milk products to start with. Some of them are foreign, but most of those are Russian. Russians eat fermented milk products almost every day of their life. Probably the weirdest is from Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia. It's kumis, and this is fermented horse milk, which also you can't drink and drive in Russia. And it comes in this beer bottle. I have never tried it. I'm not tempted to. It's also fermented. It's something between sour cream and fermented milk and it's about 5% fat. It's soured milk that's gone bad and they use it for cooking pancakes. A specific fermented aged milk just for cooking pancakes. This is another Central Asian thing. It's similar to Turkish ayran, if you know what that is. And it's basically fermented milk that's almost turned into yogurt at this point, but it's still extremely liquid. This is one of my favorite things. I did not like it the first time I tried it. I thought it was weird and gross. A lot of people say it's cottage cheese, but it's not. The internet says it's cork. I mean, I don't know what that is, but basically they sour milk and then they curdle it with acid and they strain it. So it's bas it's very dry. It has sort of the consistency of like a marshmallow almost. And it is sweet and delicious. It's great with honey berries all kinds of things. It's super Russian. They put it in all these products. I'll show you a few of those. They make it into this candy thing called Sirok, which means like cheese, cheese candy. This one's vanilla flavor. They got chocolate, a couple other flavors, but it's 30% fat and 30% sugar. It's extremely fattening, but it's so tasty. Much better than chocolate or ice cream even. It's one of my favorite things in Russia. They also whip it into a yogurt-like thing called Tvorshak. They have all kinds of flavors like ice cream, creme brulee, uh, and fruit flavors, but it is amazing. It's so creamy. It's my favorite thing to eat in Russia. I eat it almost every day. Because the Russian winter is so long, they preserve a lot of food. And before they had grocery stores with food from all over the world flown in and shipped in, they were canning and pickling a lot of food. My girlfriend's grandmother still pickles food like the winter is coming and they have to do it or they won't survive. They have more pickles than they'll ever eat. Most of them go bad, but Russians love pickled things and canned things. And I'll show you a couple of the weirdest things that you can find pickled in Russia. Tomatoes, which are preserved. These are little bitty squash. Um, tiny corn, cocktail onions, uh, what is this? Chestnut is, uh, garlic. I forgot my own language for a second. Little green things. I had no idea what they are. Pickled grape leaves, which I guess this is foreign, but they love it. This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. They call it eggplant caviar. And it's basically pureed eggplant. I have no idea why it's orange because eggplant isn't orange, but it's super Russian. They love to eat it with cracker. But my personal favorite of all of the pickles are these assorted pickled mushrooms, the, or the little ones. The little ones are so good. Uh, the, bla the black ones taste weird and meaty and have like a really strange rubbery texture to them. I'm not a big fan. But yeah, also they've got this kind of wood mushroom. I don't know what these mushrooms are, that they're this green color. It's so many kinds, normal portobello mushrooms. And they've got the low, the low quality bottom shelf mushrooms also here. Here's a whole other section of pickled things that have to be refrigerated because they're like freshly pickled and not really sealed. 
Uh, but they're the best pickles. This one is my favorite. I'm going to take that right now. Even adults eat the baby food. They love to make preserved mashed vegetables. It's baby food. It's not a baby food. It's, it's just baby mashed, food. mashed fruit. It's very really <laughs> yeah. like, stop it. <laughs> Another super typical Russian food is either canned fish over here. Look how many kinds of canned fish they have. Like every kind of canned fish you can imagine. And canned meats. The weirdest one is canned beef. Uh, it smells like cat food. I've had it before. They mix it with macaroni. It's for poor people. This is an expensive one. They've got much cheaper ones. This looks disgusting. Look how bad that looks. Oh, wow. That's terrible. What is it? It's a Tushanaya. Yeah, it's Tushanka, but it's pig Tushanka. Oh my God, that's disgusting. Also, you can't close it after you open it because it's cut this type. So you have to eat this whole can of weird pig stuff. I'm gonna make it for you tomorrow. And you're gonna make it? Is this all about the baby food? Yes. Yeah. This one is oh, in God. gelatin. That's disgusting. Let's not watch. Let's not eat that, please. <laughs> They got a no lot of normal kinds of sausage, but they also got this sausage that's rolled in cheese. They don't like to cook their bacon. Instead, they smoke it. And so it's still very fatty and it's not, it doesn't feel cooked at all, but they eat it like this. And I don't know, I still don't trust it. I don't like to eat it. It's basically just fat. They also have a version called sallow, which is literally just pork fat. But yeah, all of this is uncooked. It's only smoked or salted and then they uh, eat it raw basically. And this might be the weirdest thing in the entire supermarket. It's called Peshtot. It's pate. And this one is themed after a Soviet astronaut. You can see the CCCR on the helmet. CCCP is CCCR. And uh, yeah, it's squeeze tube of pate. I've never tried it. Should we try it? No. Yeah, you're not about that? No. Okay. And you can see there's a whole section of different kinds of pate. I bet it smells delicious. Fish is also one of the top things that Russians eat almost every day. They've got a lot of freshwater fish because there's so many rivers in the country. And also there's Arctic fish from the Arctic Ocean, some fish from the Black Sea. So there's so many kinds of fish here. Besides the dried fish I showed you earlier, they also have smoked fish. They put it in a smoker thing hanging, and uh, it doesn't smell that fishy. It looks much worse than it tastes. It's still soft and uh, delicious, but yeah, they got anchovies, these strange fish that I, I really like that one. It's super fatty. Here are just some buckets of uh, some, I guess, pickled or cured things. You can also buy caviar here. They have a whole caviar section with like five different kinds of fish. Black caviar, salmon caviar. Basically a line to get fish here at the counter. I feel really sorry for this guy. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really do. He doesn't even fit in the tank. You would never see this in America, but this is a fresh live sturgeon, which is basically a dinosaur. And I know they're protected in America. Here they eat them, they harvest them. This one came from a farm. Uh, how much do you think this guy costs? There is a huge freezer that is entirely dedicated to caviar. It can be as cheap as like 400 for a can of salmon caviar, or as expensive as 15,599 for this stuff. Other than alcohol, caviar is like the only thing that has these safety security tags on it in the entire store. Every one of these is either in a safety security box or it has one of those tags. Even the ones that are like 400 rubles, because obviously it's the most stolen thing in Russia. <laughs> they also have this, which is imitation. Uh, it's fake. I don't know how they make it, but imitation ikra. It's like a dollar fifty for a jar. This one even claims it's a vegan, a vegan caviar. Wow, you'd never find that in America. And there's also this dip, which has a little bit of caviar in it and it's mostly mayonnaise that they all love. This is dried caviar, and it's basically made into chips that they freeze dried and packaged. There's also an entire freezer just for herring in all of its many forms. They even have one that's specifically made for this salad, herring in a fur coat, which you might have heard of before. 
but yes, herring is number one fish in Russia probably. Also like this seaweed stuff, I like it. It's, it's actually really good. Uh, this one's like Asian style, but they also have one with mixed with a bunch of other carrots and stuff. Uh, there's one that's mixed with mayonnaise already. And this is an entire section, not for real crab meat. No, no, it is all imitation crab meat in many different forms. I've got crab roll sticks, slices of imitation crab. This is imitation crab claws in the shape of claws. We've got imitation lobster tails. This giant block of imitation something. So many kinds of imitation crab. They put it in salad with just a little bit of mayonnaise and yeah, probably mix it with that seaweed we saw. Russian gangsters are often called gopniks. And these are the guys who just start trouble, drink a lot. Their other food besides beer and vodka is sunflower seeds. And it's really a thing in Russia. You see the guys always go to the store and they'll buy a bottle of vodka a bottle, or a bottle of beer and sunflower seeds. And you know that's all they're going to eat for the next four hours. Seriously, this is all sunflower seeds. So many kinds. They've got fruit from all over the world, and most of it's pretty good, but there's a few that are never good and you should never buy in Russia. This mango could you literally be used as a weapon. It is harder than a basketball. It is so tough. I mean, really, like you, you could play lacrosse with this mango. And avocados. This is not an avocado. It will never be an avocado. It looks like an avocado, but I don't know what they did. Same thing here, extremely hard, so hard. What is this strange green fruit? It says it's grapefruit, but I don't believe. I've never seen a grapefruit like that in my life. This is really funny. I thought I'd just throw it in with the video. This is a Coca-Cola container on the side of this uh, freezer aisle. And inside they have the brand that replaced Coca-Cola. It's made in the old Coca-Cola factories. It's not made by Coca-Cola, but, um, you know, we'll cover how that works in another video. They have a section of the supermarket just for saunas. So you've got this special wand that you use to put water on the, the sauna. And they've got a timer that you flip upside down, an hourglass. Uh, I don't know what this thing is, but I think you just beat somebody with it. You put these in water and they're called viniki. You, you hit people with them like for a massage. You wipe, put them in their face and it's supposed to be, you know, really good smelling and delicious. Um, they've got buckets just for putting water and stuff in the banya. They've got mittens and hats to protect you from the heat. Special shoes just to wear funny stuff. And this is all of the kinds of essential oils that you use in the sauna, like mint, uh, orange, lemon. They don't really like normal flavors of mouthwash. Like they've got one kind of mint, but the majority are made out of other stuff. Uh, this is like balsam. This one's with ginger. You've got uh, oak and pine, which is very popular. Lavender and pine. This one is some kind of flower. This one is lavender and pine. Uh, what else? We've got oak and pine again. This one is mint and it's blue, but it's also got this black oil in it, which has charcoal. Do not understand that. Here's another oily one. You can see the levels, layers of oil in it. I tried it. I don't think it actually works or helps. I think it actually makes your mouth worse. I don't believe that. As promised, I'm going to show you all the flavors of Lay's potato chips that only exist in Russia. I think they're pretty fancy. Maybe you'll think they're disgusting. I like most of them. There's a pretty big selection of Lay's potato chips. They got normal flavors like salt, sour cream and onion, and cheese, but also lobster, which is one of my new favorites. Crab, which I think is the most popular in Russia. Grilled ribs, which I don't know how that's different from barbecue. I'll have to try it and check it out. And salmon with sour cream.
Well, there are so many things that I could talk about that are weird here. But if you want to know how things changed in Russian supermarkets because of the sanctions, go check out my other video where I talk about some of the things I noticed that changed since my last trip where I was here before the sanctions. And have a great rest of your day.